Welcome to Mac Related Things. I'm your host, Jim Fair. Today, a quick update on how to fix the El Capitan install problem. So if you're trying to install over the internet with Shift Option Command R, which should work for a lot of Macs these days, like I'm testing this on a Mac Pro 2013, uh, you're getting an interesting error message, uh, no packages eligible for install. So I can walk you through fixing that problem and uh, either we can start fresh or you know you can start right at the error message or if you turn the machine off while the message is on the screen, we can start from there. So skip ahead in the video if you need to start from the error message. So we're going to start up holding down Shift Option Command R find the power button. There it is. So I'm holding Shift Option Command R. I'm going to briefly see the globe. And then we're going to start over the internet. There it is. If you're on Wi-Fi, you may be asked to select a Wi-Fi network and enter its password. All right, so first step here is, well, obviously you must have a backup before you do this. So we're going to go into Disk Utility and we're going to erase our primary drive. We're going to click on it. This is an older version of Disk Utility, so the View button is not here before Apple did that. So we're going to go Erase and we're just going to give it the traditional name, Mac Intosh HD, even though it's no longer an HD. Accept the default Mac OS Extended Journal. GUID partition map is correct for all Intel Macs. Click Erase. Done. Exit. Double click to reinstall. It launches. We say Continue. Continue. Agree. Agree. Select the target drive. Click Install. And you can see at this point it says Downloading. We're not really installing it. We're downloading the El Capitan installer. So this will take some time. I'm going to assume you're not going to be sitting here watching like a hawk waiting for the reboot. So if we just walk away from this and leave it running, eventually it'll reboot and we're not touching any keys. It'll still have internet and it'll give us the darn message. Uh, what is it now? No packages eligible for install. So we can recover from, right from there. We don't have to, you know, intercept this before that happens. You, you know, you can if you want to, but uh, human nature being what it is. I mean, the other day I tried this and I went off to the bathroom. It said there's 20 minutes left to come back. It's already got the error message on the screen. And I think we're rebooting. Yep. So, I mean, I could intervene here, but I want to see this error message and show you that we can recover from it. There it is. OS X could not be installed on your computer. No packages were eligible for install. All right, so here's where we're going to restart and we're going to zap the PRAM and disconnect the Ethernet. I'm going to disconnect the Ethernet right now. That's done. And I'm going to restart. I'm going to hold Command Option P R till I get a second chime. Then I'll quickly change what I'm, the keys I'm holding to Command S. There's a second chime. Now I'm holding Command S for single user mode. Let go when you see the white text on black. Sometimes you need to press Return a couple of times so you see the shell prompt at the bottom here. We're going to go Date one two two two. 1800 and the year 2014. There it is. And we're going to type exit and press return. And now it's going to continue the install. Or it may give us a user interface. It's hard to decide uh, which way it's going to go. But we are now disconnected from the internet. You can see the date is set back to Monday, December 22nd, 2014. You know, we could probably use 2015 or 2016. I forget when LCAP came out, but uh, I know the state works, so I've been, been using it over and over. Okay, and here comes our graphical user interface. And we want to see what happens here. Install. See, there's a user interface now. We can go to Utilities. 
And then we can, you know, click on the terminal window, make it bigger. You can type in the date command and see if we're still you know, in 2014. Yes, we are, so we don't have to change anything. We're going to just going to go continue, continue, agree, select the target drive, continue, and off the installer will go. And this time it won't fail because it thinks it's 2014 and it has no internet connection to sync up the clock and figure out otherwise. So that's how you solve this problem. Now let's just say uh, your target OS is, you know, High Sierra. Why do I say High Sierra? Well, you know, when you do this internet recovery, you have a choice of two OSs, the, the latest or the oldest that your machine supports, right? So if the oldest happens to be LCAP, that doesn't necessarily mean you want, you want to stay there. So uh, we'll show you how to upgrade to High Sierra after this. Let's go upgrade to High Sierra now. So we're just going to do a search on Upgrade to Mac OS High Sierra. And we want this Apple support article right here. If we go Preferences, Advanced, Show Full Website Address, you can see the URL here support.apple.com slash en for English dash ca for Canada. It would be US if you're in the US and other country codes for others. And then there's the article ID number, which won't change. And what do we need from this article? We need step four, download. Ignore the Catalina download. So you click get Mac OS High Sierra. It opens the app store and you can click download. And now we're downloading High Sierra. And I think this is going to be the little download, so it'll launch very, very quickly. There it is. And I'm going to immediately upgrade to High Sierra. Agree, agree, install, give it my password, which is Apple. <laughs> and I'll change it to a more secure password after everything's up to date. And, you know, let's say High Sierra is your target OS. Now, why would you want High Sierra? Well, it's the oldest Mac OS still getting security updates and the most compatible. Do these other updates later. I don't want this stuff to be on. Uh, and, um, you know, it supports uh, Adobe Creative Cloud 2020. It supports the latest version of Microsoft Office or Office 365 for Mac. And the older OSs do not. Now, why would you want Mojave instead? Well, Mojave, if you're, say, an Apple Final Cut Pro 10 user, you might be stuck on Final Cut Pro 10 version 10.4 for High Sierra. But on Mojave, you can go to the current version, which at the time of this recording was 10.4.8. Now, there aren't that many differences between 10.4 of Final Cut Pro 10 and 10.4.8, but if some of them are important to you, then you'd have to move up to Mojave. Now, why do I prefer sometimes using High Sierra over Mojave? Well, High Sierra is less of a pain from a security perspective. Uh, we still have to allow uh, third-party kernel extensions to load. We don't have to unlock the preference pane uh, to do that. See, in security here and privacy, you know, you would get a message saying allow something that would be an allow button over here, right? And uh, in Mojave, it's, it's even more annoying. And then in Catalina, it's positively frustrating. Hi Sierra, Mojave, Catalina, those are the three currently supported versions of macOS that still get security updates from Apple. So that's all I have to tell you for this uh, video. Thanks for watching fade out.